We have been making our way through this study in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, a study on the spiritual gifts, that which God has given to us, his children, in order to build up the body of Christ, in order to build up and to edify each other as Christians. Now, this may not seem very important at first glance, because many people kind of see church as a one hour, two hour thing we do on a Sunday morning with other people. However, the church should be more than that. The church is interconnected in such a way that you have something that God has given you, which I need. And it is for us to discover what God has invested in our hearts to be able to give to each other. Some of you here, you receive what God has given me for you every Sunday because I stand up here and I give you a message every Sunday. But that is only part of my prophetic gift. If you come to me outside of this context and you talk to me, chances are I will continue to give you my prophetic gift because that's what God has given from me, from me to give to you. And God has also given you gifts. And my hope is that as we go through this, you will discover a gift or maybe a couple of gifts that you have and that you will cultivate these gifts by focusing on your relationship with God and allowing God to develop these gifts within you as you seek him by faith. We've already covered a few. We've looked at the utterance of wisdom, the utterance of knowledge that sometimes through the spirit of God, people are gifted with the ability to bring wisdom into a situation that needs wisdom and to give knowledge or insight about situations that don't necessarily come from the surface, but come from the deep thoughts of God himself. We have looked at faith, which most Christians will agree is the foundation upon which we build our ministry and our lives. But there are people who are gifted with special faith for particular situations and circumstances in which faith is needed. In our church, there are some things we have decided to do within the last few months that may seem like a push for a smaller church, but it's not. You see, we are doing these things because we believe in the power of God. And whether it takes one person or a hundred person, a hundred persons, God is still able to use that in order to fulfill his purposes. And there are some people who will believe in God no matter what the circumstances look like. And they're able to communicate their faith to other people. That, my friends, is a spiritual gift. And God has given that to his church. Last week, we talked about healings and miracles. And let me say this. I've been getting a whole lot of phone calls and a whole lot of thoughts about that message. Because for many people, the idea of healing and miracles is a bygone idea. It is a thought that comes from the scriptures that has nothing to do with reality. But let me say something, my friends. The same God of the Old Testament and New Testament is the same God today. And because of that, I know and I believe that God is still a healer, that God still will do miracles. Just as was done in the scriptures, he will do it now. And sometimes he invests these gifts in people within the body of Christ that he can use as a channel for his healing and a channel for miracles. That has nothing to do with congregationalism. That has nothing to do with being a Baptist. That has nothing to do with any denomination. That has to do with the Bible, believing in what the word of God says is given to the people of God. This week, we're going to look at prophecy and discernment. Let's pray. With the gift of prophecy ever before me. I grew up in a Christian home. In fact, my father is a pastor. And so from a very tender age, prophecy was a big part of my life. I used to be in church when none of you were in church. <laughs> I had to be in church because of my commitment in a ministry family. And that exposed me to what most Christians see as the primary gift given to the church, the gift of prophecy. Prophecy is the foretelling 
or foretelling of the word of God. Let me repeat that. Prophecy is the foretelling or the foretelling of the word of God. And why I describe it as probably the most primary gift given to most churches is because it is the most focused on gift. Most churches have a pastor because they want someone who is able to communicate to the people the word of God. And my friend, if you're a pastor that communicates the word of God in sincerity and in truth and in a way that is applicable and practical, practical to people's lives, then you, my friend, may have the gift of prophecy. But prophecy is not just given to pastors. Let's be clear on this. Anytime a Christian opens their mouth to declare what God says in his word, you are prophesying. You are prophesying. You are stating the heart and mind of God. So every time you quote a scripture, you are prophesying. Or every time you take the principles of the word of God and apply them to someone's life or someone's situation that they're going through, you are being a prophet. No, this is in no way destroying our idea of prophetic um, ancestry. If you read in the Old Testament... God would sometimes give insight, give knowledge to particular individuals who were called prophets, and they would communicate these things to the people of God. Sometimes those things had to do with something that God was planning for his people later on. Sometimes it was to remind the people about the commandments of God. And so people had a reverence for prophets because prophets communicated the word of God to the people. Not so much today. Unfortunately, the corruption of church life and unfortunately, the amount of glorification we give to pastors has watered down this idea that God has gifted prophets to the church. Because sometimes we see these great men, these people who are great orators, and we see them fall down. And so people will say, well, they could never have been a prophet because they failed. Or they could never have been a prophet because their personal lives might look like it's in disarray. But you see, my friend, just because of the imperfections of human beings, that doesn't mean that God doesn't continue to speak. And let me be clear on this. Every gift of the spirit that God has given to us is exercised through imperfect people. But they are exercised so that people around them can be edified and lifted up and made to trust in God more. I will be the first to admit that even though I have the gift of prophecy, I'm not a perfect person. I'm still growing. I'm still learning about God. I'm still trying to understand more. There are times when if I say something wrong, I have to come right back up here and say, guess what? You know, I studied this and I studied it wrong. Forgive me. I'm still trying to be more of what God wants me to be. But thank God, in spite of my imperfection, God uses me and continues to use me in ways that go beyond the natural. Through me, through prophecy, God has used me to help people to understand the gospel. God has used me to speak into people's problems and issues what God thinks about it. And hopefully, and through the fruit of it, I've seen God raise up leaders and people who want to serve him because I've simply given them the word of God. That doesn't make me great. That makes God great. That makes God great. The gift of prophecy comes both through those who are given the opportunity to preach the word of God publicly in church, but it is also given to every single Christian who proclaims the word of God into a situation. Now you might say, well, pastor, is it the same kind of gift as we see in the Old Testament where it is both foretelling and forthtelling? My answer to that is, I believe the issue of foretelling, of telling about the future, from the heart of God, there is no longer any need for that. Because the word of God given to us in completion, that, my friends, is the full revelation of everything you will ever need for life and for godliness. If you want to know what the future is all about, 
it is revealed within the word of God. You see, if you don't have a high view of scripture, if you don't have a high view of God's revelation given to us in the Bible, everything about Christianity is going to seem like a hope or a wish. It's going to seem like, oh, we're going through exercises that have no actual practical value to our lives. But if you have a high value of scripture, everything that God reveals in his word will give you insight about life and about your future. And hopefully every one of us have that view. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Everything you need to know for life, for godliness, for your future is revealed to us in God's word. That's why if there was only one thing we needed, if everything was taken away from us, if there was only one thing we needed to keep in life, I would encourage every one of us to choose the word of God. Because the word of God, my friends, will give you insight and give you wisdom and give you courage for life and for your future. If you don't hold to, to the word of God as your final and thorough um, example and, and useful, useful thing for life and for godliness, you, my friend, are going to be confused and you are going to have a life that is on shifting sand, shifting sand every single day. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 to 21, we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place. In other words, prophecy is to enlighten darkness. That's what it is for. He continues saying there, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. I've heard it so many times. People will say, how can you hold to the word of God, the Bible as the word of God? Wasn't it written by imperfect human beings? So why is it that you're seeing it as a final authority for life and godliness? Well, I'm glad you asked because it answers itself. This is no ordinary book, my friends. It is a book that was written as the Holy Spirit led people along gave them insight and illumination of the mind of God. That is why we don't look at the Bible as just another literature book. We look at the Bible as the revelation of God to us because God did it through imperfect people. If he can use us today to prophesy through, of course, he could use it back then to inspire people to write his word. We have to have a high view of the prophetic word of scripture. Otherwise, all other prophecy will fall flat. If I come up here and I tell you my thoughts about life, I am basically giving you my opinion. If I give you my opinion and you agree with it, then you agree with my opinion. But don't you dare think that because I come up here and give you my opinion that I am giving you the word of God. The only way you're going to know that I am communicating to you the word of God is if you compare what I say with what the word of God says. And if the word of God says what I say, what I'm saying, then you know that, okay, Pastor Andrew was prophesying. However, if I come up here and give you my opinion that has nothing to do with the word of God, I can tell you this, you need to ignore it and run away as fast as possible. Because my opinion will not give you life. Only the word of God will give you life. Why do you think I keep telling you guys every day? Look, take what I say, but I want you to go home and study it. And if you have any questions or thoughts about it, come back and talk to me about it. Why? Because God wants us to be committed, not to the pastor's words, but to his word to his word. And I want to challenge you once again 
Be a scholar, a student of the word of God. Don't just hear things and ignore it or hear things and accept it based on your thoughts about life. Study to show yourself approved. A workman or workwoman that doesn't need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. In other words, when Pastor Andrew comes up, don't despise what he's saying. Don't ignore it because you don't like it. Go test it. How do you test it? Look at what the word of God says compared to what Pastor Andrew is saying and see if it, is, if it aligns. If it aligns, then you know that God wants you to hear it and accept it. If it doesn't align, come back to Pastor Andrew and say, Pastor Andrew, that doesn't align. <laughs> so that I can grow too. That's what God wants. Test the spirits so that you know what is true. That is prophecy in a nutshell. And there are some of you here that exercise the gift of prophecy in this church. Today, mom, when she stood up and she declared the word of God, talking about the sacrifice of praise, she was prophesying because she was taking what the word of God says and proclaiming it to you and me. And we were encouraged by it to a deeper sense of worship. That's prophecy. There are some people who heard it and said, well, that's for you, not for me. Well, then you've missed an opportunity to grow in your faith. But if you heard it and applied it, you will grow and God will reveal even more of himself to you. Prophecy. The second thing, and let me try and get through this very quickly, discernment. Discernment is the ability to differentiate between spirits. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and the B part of verse 10, to another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. Now, the first time you hear this statement, you might think to yourself, what is he talking about? He's talking about a reality that goes beyond what is taught necessarily in most churches. Let me, let me be clear on this, my friends. There are things that exist in our lives and around our lives that we cannot see. Those things the Bible refers to as the spiritual things. For example, the Bible says that God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Chances are none of us here have ever seen God personally with our naked eyes. But we can't see him with our naked eyes because he is spirit. That doesn't make him any less real. It is just that in order to see God, you have to see him through spiritual eyes. Discernment as a spiritual gift is given to you so that you might recognize where God is and where God is not. It helps you to see what is happening under the surface of things. I'll give you an example. Discernment is that feeling you get when you walk into a room and something doesn't feel right. You can't place your finger on it. The room might actually look beautiful. Everybody might have smiles on their faces. But there is something that doesn't necessarily feel right there. Some people refer to that as intuition. Some people refer to that as maybe projection of their own pain and, and frustrations with life that's causing them to feel a certain kind of um, a, a feeling of discomfort when going into other settings. But there is such a thing as that discerning spirit given by God to alert you to a spiritual problem. Have you ever been talking to someone and you say, how are you doing? And they say, well, yeah, I'm fine. Everything is good. And deep in your heart of hearts, you know that things are not fine. You just know it. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter the smile that's on their face. In your spirit, you sense that this person is going through something. We see God didn't give you that feeling in order for you to be nosy 
or in order for you to try and like judge that person. No. Sometimes God gives us that feeling of discernment in order to properly minister to people. Sometimes when I'm talking with someone and they say that they're fine and I get that feeling, I say to them, are you sure? And I will, if pushed, say to them, you know, I sense that there may be something wrong. Am I correct or am I wrong? Because, you know, sometimes God gives us the discernment of the Spirit so that we might effectively minister to one another. There are people walking around in pain, in trouble, every day of their lives, depressed, overwhelmed with life overwhelmed with confusion about God's word and we ignore it sometimes because we can't tell the difference between politeness and spiritual grief. Discernment helps us to look beyond politeness to see what's really true. That's why many of you when you say to me hey you're doing fine I'll probe. I'll probe because the spirit of God is telling me something is going on that goes beneath the surface of things. God gives that to us so that we might minister effectively to each other in the church of Jesus Christ. There's a story in the book of Acts chapter 16 about this little girl, a young girl who the Bible says had a evil spirit called a spirit of divination. And the spirit of divination allowed this little girl to tell people their fortunes. And she made a lot of money for her owners because she was able to do so. Paul and Silas, the, the missionaries, the ones sent by God to minister to the Gentiles, they were passing through her town and they were ministering. And this little girl with this evil spirit within her begins to say some things that sound Right. She says things like, these men are servants of the Most High God. You should listen to them. Now that sounds right. That sounds good. She was encouraging people to listen to Paul and to Silas, but she was saying it through an evil spirit. Now I don't understand the fullness of the context here. But obviously there was something that was being held back in that girl's life because of that evil spirit. And the reason why I know this is because of Paul's response to her. The Bible says that as she walked behind them, shouting out and telling everybody, these are servants of the Most High God, Paul felt annoyed. He felt annoyed. He should have naturally felt good that someone was recognizing him and Silas for the job they were doing, but he felt annoyed. Why did he feel annoyed? It wasn't because of the words coming out of her mouth. He sensed that there was something wrong with this little girl. Through discernment of the Holy Spirit, he recognized that not the words of her mouth, but the thing that was leading her in her heart, that that thing was in enmity with God's will for her life. And the Bible says, as they walked along and as she kept shouting, Paul turned around and looked at her and said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come out of her. And he cast the spirit of divination out of that little girl. And she was free. Now, of course, there was a whole lot of trouble because of that. She could no longer tell fortunes. And the owners that she had were very upset about that. But Paul, through the Holy Spirit, was able to deliver that little girl. Why? Because he had discernment. He saw beneath the surface. We have this saying that says, not all that glitters is gold. And that is true. Because sometimes in the midst of people looking good and saying the right things, there are spirits that do not please God, that are in there working, trying to distract people from God's will. But one thing we know is God is a God of miracles. And whether it is casting out a demon or healing the sick or raising the dead, God is able to break any chain in the human heart. But it is up to us through the discernment of the Spirit of God, to know what those chains are. Pastor Andrew, why don't you preach a lot more nice messages? Why don't you preach messages that are more aligned with what we want to hear every day? You know why? Because God has given me a little bit of discernment. A little bit. It humbles me. 
But one of the reasons why I preach and I preach every part of the word of God, it is because there are chains that need to be broken in Jesus' name. And they will not be broken by butterflies and flowery things. They're going to be broken as the word of God is declared unashamedly, unabashed to people, whether they agree with it or not. We just want God to have his way. And sometimes that's going to come through nice, nice words. Sometimes that's going to come through rebuke. But if the word of God is true, and if we believe in it, then we know, brothers and sisters, that God will use his word for his glory when it is declared. Discernment is given to some Christians. If you in your heart hear the voice of God when people speak, and you feel a discomfort or you feel that something is going on that needs to be dealt with, maybe you have a gift of discernment that needs to be developed. Maybe you yourself feeling uncomfortable about your life. That might be the Spirit of God trying to stir you up to say, you know, maybe I need to do some things differently. Maybe I need to change some ways of mine. However, discernment is only given for the purpose of building people up, making people more of what God wants them to be. 1 John 4 verse 1 to 3 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. That is why, my friends, it is possible to gain insight from things and from books that aren't necessarily the Bible. But guess what? If you receive insight that does not agree with or goes against or contravenes the word of God, you can already know that God did not want that for you. That God is trying to protect you from such knowledge. Why? Because his book, his word, supersedes any other idea. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14, the natural person, we read it this morning, does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. That's why many of you will look at me and say, Pastor Andrew, you're crazy if you think I'm going to accept that. Well, you, you will only think I'm crazy if you're not able to spiritually discern yourself. This, my friend, is the will of God, discernment. How can I develop my discernment gift? Read the word of God. Why do you think every one of these gifts is connected to your relationship with God? Because if you are close to God, God will reveal himself to you. If you are far away from God, all the gifts he's given you will also be far away from use in your life. Your closeness to God, your proximity to God is part of the way in which you will be blessed in your Christian walk. And is a big way in which God will use you to bless your brothers and sisters in Christ. The spiritual gift of prophecy and discernment are for those whom God has given the gift to. If you believe you have either one of these gifts, or maybe even both of them, I want to encourage you to speak to me. I would also encourage you to read the word of God as a matter of daily practice. As you draw close to God, these gifts will be refined. These gifts will become more pronounced in your life. And every time you walk into the house of God, you will come with a prophetic word. Every time you walk into the house of God, you will come with a discerning spirit. And you will be able to minister to the needs of your brothers and sisters in ways that you never could before. What a church this would be if we were exercising our spiritual gifts in the way that God said we should. It would be a wonderful place of healing and grace for us all. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your gospel. 
Thank you for prophets and discerners that you've given to your church. Father, I pray for every Christian here that we would discover what our gifts are and that we would develop them by being close to you and walking in the spirit. And Lord God, I pray that when all is said and done, that these words would bear fruit in the days, months, and years to come in this church. In Jesus' name, amen.